Let's be real. We can't depend on Tyler Adams to be available. The sooner we realize that, the less it will hurt when he's not with us. In the last year, one player has developed to be the clear favorite to play the six when Adams is injured. What I want to do in this video is provide a comprehensive scouting report of Johnny Cardoso, and after spending the last week watching the replays of each of his matches this season, I want to share with you what I think makes him worthy of fighting for a starting 11 spot at Copa America. I even went digging into the official Real Batiste message boards to find out what the local fans thought of our American talent. To understand the full scope of his skill set, we need to start with understanding Manuel Pellegrini's Real Betis, and under the guidance of Pellegrini for the 2023-24 season, Real Betis has continued to evolve tactically, maintaining a competitive edge in La Liga with a robust and adaptable tactical framework. If you're relatively new to soccer, Pellegrini's name may not mean much to you, but he's quite a historically relevant coach, best known for his successful managerial stints at clubs like Real Madrid and Manchester City. And during his tenure at City, he won the Premier League title in the 2013-14 season and two League Cups with the English club. Over the years, he's earned a reputation for his tactical acumen and calm demeanor. Let's study the strategic nuances that have characterized Batiste's play under Pellegrini's stewardship. Pellegrini has anchored Batiste in a versatile 4-2-3-1 formation, a structure that facilitates both stability and flexibility. This system is designed to maximize the strengths of key players and adapt to various game scenarios effectively. At its core, the formation allows Batiste to control the midfield through a double pivot, which not only shields the back line, but also supports the attacking unit. Real Betis under this manager is characterized by having a disciplined and structured defensive setup. They employ a high press strategy, particularly evident in their forward and midfield lines attempting to regain possession in the opposition's half swiftly. This high press is calibrated to disrupt opponents' build-up play early, and with the team transitioning into a compact shape if the initial press is bypassed. The defensive solidity is further enhanced by the strategic use of fullbacks who, while supportive of the offense, maintain a balance to mitigate the counterattacks. And central to these tactics is the pivotal role of the midfield unit, the double pivot, often consisting of technically proficient players and it's crucial in transitioning play from defense to attack. These players are tasked with dictating the tempo and circulating the ball in the game. The midfield setup is designed to create numerical advantages in central areas, facilitating controlled ball progression and fostering an environment where creative midfielders can thrive. And here is where I want to focus and spend most of our time, because Johnny will play the largest role in this double pivot midfield. And for fans of the US men's national team, I think we can take confidence in the fact that Johnny has been trusted early on to play in the most important role in Pellegrini's tactics. Real Batista this season showcases a well-rounded tactical approach that blends defensive rigor and creative attacking play. The team's ability to adapt to different tactical challenges without losing their core identity is a testament to Pellegrini's experience. So now that we understand a little bit more about how Real Batiste wants to play in their style and how Johnny fits into that, let's see what has made Johnny the most exciting prospect of this young USMNT core. So in this setup, Johnny Soccer serves as one of the anchor midfielders for Real Batiste, and he exhibits the characteristics that blend seamlessly with the tactical ethos prescribed by the experienced manager. Now you can read my scouting report if you want all the numbers and figures of Johnny's season, which are by themselves quite telling, and just to set the scene on the number side before we move to the actual play, and with the caveat that foot mob ratings are not conclusive, Johnny's average match rating of 7.56 is currently good enough for 6th best player in La Liga. Let me say that again so you understand how bonkers this is. Johnny's average match rating is 6th. Six best in La Liga behind only Jude Bellingham, Ilkay Gondwan, his Real Batiste teammate Isco, Federico Valverde, and Vinicius Jr. Johnny's success on the field can be attributed to several key aspects of his gameplay. What I think is really important is that he just has such a proactive involvement in various phases of the play, and his technical abilities help him make an impact there. So here's a detailed breakdown of the specific actions and traits that contribute to his effectiveness on the pitch. The first, I think, is spatial awareness. Now, Johnny's consistently demonstrating excellent spatial awareness. He actively seeks to open space for himself and his teammates by smart positioning, which helps in both defensive cover and in facilitating fluid attacking movements. He's frequently checking to the ball, and he provides an option for the back line and his fellow midfielders. This movement is crucial in maintaining possession and progressing the play. 
as it helps Batiste bypass pressing opponents and keeps the midfield dynamics fluid. His readiness to cover for teammates or track back quickly is a testament to his understanding of the game and commitment to the team's defensive structure. This ability ensures that the midfield does not become a liability even when transitioning from attack to defense. The second I think is important to understand is his ball retention under pressure. He excels in tight spaces, showing calmness and composure to retain possession even under heavy pressure. His ability to shield the ball and make intelligent layoffs allows his team to avoid turnovers in critical areas. He possesses a really refined dribbling skill that enables him to navigate through tight midfield areas. And this not only helps him in evading pressure, but also in breaking the lines of opposing midfielders creating opportunities for forward progression and attacking plays. His vision and passing accuracy are key in transitioning the ball from defense to attack. By accurately delivering long balls or intricately threaded passes through the midfield, he plays a pivotal role in Batista's ability to switch play or quickly counterattack when he himself wins the ball. And I want to show off this play for a moment because he's in the attacking third, he wants to get the ball to this player in space, but there's a defender in the passing lane. To get rid of him, Johnny deftly plants the defender where he wants him to be with his own body language, and then quickly shifts to his left side where he suddenly has a passing lane open. And such a little moment like this, which I think is such an underrated part of his game and doesn't really get talked about in scouting reports or social media or whatever, leads to a potential goal scoring opportunity. And now on this side, we see here a similar situation in the defending third playing out where he plants the defender again, then shifts the ball to the opening passing lane. Now the third and last I want to talk about is his IQ and ability to read the game. Johnny's ability to read the game allows him to anticipate the opponent's moves, which is crucial for intercepting passes and initiating counterattacks. His positional sense during different phases of play enhances his effectiveness in both offensive and defensive roles. Now, depending on the game situation, Johnny can adapt his roles effectively, whether it requires pressing higher up the pitch or dropping deeper to assist in the buildup, or pushing forward to add numbers in attack. This flexibility is a significant asset to any team that he's on. Now, his skills are particularly evident during transitions, where his quick decision making and ability to move the ball rapidly are invaluable. Whether it's launching a counterattack or recovering defensively, his actions in these phases often dictate the tempo and effectiveness of the team's play. So that's Johnny in Seville. How can he translate that to the US Men's National Team? Well, I think for one, his skill set would adapt well to Greg Berhalter's system because it emphasizes controlled possession and strong midfield play, two things that Johnny's very good at. And his ability to maintain possession coupled with his defensive capabilities, I think again, would just fit naturally into the system, which usually brings midfielders in that are good at ball handling, but also stabilizing the team defensively. Now, the main differences compared to his role in Real Batiste under Pellegrini would involve adapting to Burhalter's potentially more rigid positional play and the nuances of international soccer, which often demand quicker adaptations and a broader understanding of some of the more simple play styles. And at the US Men's National Team, Johnny might also be tasked with a more disciplined role in maintaining the team structure, and he would have less freedom than he does at Real Batiste in roaming or advancing forward. At his club, Johnny plays as one of the double pivots in the 4-2-3-1, but would likely be the solo defensive midfielder in Burhalter's 4-3-3 system. Let me know what you think of Johnny down below in the comments, and check out my new soccer shop, Just For American Fans, where a special Johnny design is 10% off but only for the first 24 hours after this video is out. The link is down below in the comments and the description. I'll see you next time. Peace.